Hello, how's it going? Thanks for joining me for this uh, live video. Um, I just wanted to start the new year off by uh, doing a conversation like I used to do many years ago. Uh, I remember, in fact, oh my goodness, uh, uh, somebody commented last time I did this that my hairstyles have improved dramatically over the years because when I first started to do these, I did it with my iPhone and that was the days where I looked particularly crazy. I didn't really use a mirror or get my hair cut. It was, I was kind of crazy looking. Uh, my hair's a bit crazy now because I haven't got it cut for about almost you know, six months or whatever. But I look a bit better than I used to. So back in the day, I would uh, get up in the morning. Um, they are still on YouTube, I think. You'll see me in my dressing gown with a cup of coffee, looking into the camera and talking about something that I've been reading about or thinking about. And, uh, you know, it'd be fun to kind of kick that off again. And I wanted to kick it off with a discussion on guilt. Uh, it was something I've been thinking about in relation to uh, The Fundamentalist, the podcast, because uh, we were talking about episode possibilities and I was saying that I wanted to talk about desire. Um, I wanted to talk about perversion. I wanted to talk about the gaze and I wanted to talk about paradox. And uh, these are some of the themes that will be coming up in future episodes. Uh, but as we talked, I was like, oh, let's do guilt. And that's particularly interesting. And I was thinking about it because there is this famous line in Seminar 7 uh, from Lacan. So Seminar, Lacan gave a, a year-long seminar <laughs> every year for like 25 years, something like that. And uh, so Seminar 7 is the year of those lectures. And in Seminar 7, uh, it's all about ethics. And he gave one of his very famous uh, lines, the aphorisms. And basically it's something like this. It's, um, how does it go? Uh, desire, no, guilt arises when we give way relative to our desire. So basically guilt arises, guilt comes about when we give ground to our desire. And uh, it's a very difficult, line to, di to decipher and there's a variety of ways that you can unpack it but I thought I would unpack it in the most straightforward way tonight because it kind of is about guilt and uh, then it might help us understand what guilt is it might help us understand what's going on inside us when we feel guilty and uh, and then I want to pivot into a kind of a basic idea of that the point of life is not to adapt ourselves to reality, but to somehow find a way to resist reality in interesting and productive ways. Okay, so first of all, what is Lacan talking about when he talks about guilt arises when you give ground to your desire? Um, so guilt is a funny thing. The, the, the kind of common sense notion of guilt is that uh, guilt is when you've done something wrong or you feel you've done something wrong or some authority tells you you've done something wrong and that feeling that arises um, from basically not doing the demand of the other is guilt and in relation to that people can say well animals feel guilt so if you're a dog lover you go well my dog feels guilt if I walk into the house and the dog has wet himself uh, in the house then you see the dog feeling guilty you see the guilty look in its eyes um, but that doesn't really get us to the heart of what guilt is in fact guilt is probably if your dog you know feels guilty when it hasn't wet the place that's guilt right if you walk into your house and the dog hasn't done anything wrong and yet still it feels it looks really guilty right it looks really kind of like unsure maybe that's more like guilt and that's what Lacan is kind of talking about is that uh, the the analogy I used in the fundamentalist episode is of someone who is pulled over by the police so you imagine driving down the highway you're within the speed limit there's nothing wrong with your car you see the lights and you hear the siren and you pull over now a lot of people start to feel nervous when that happens um, and they haven't done anything wrong now admittedly uh, you know there's because of lots of things that people have seen in social media maybe they're afraid of the of something illegal happening but let's take that out of the way for a second 
let's just talk about, you know, you're, it's the middle of the day, you're driving down the highway, you know, you're not afraid for your life or anything like that, but you're still nervous. You're still nervous when you haven't done anything wrong. A police officer gets out of the car, comes over to the car, and you're all kind of tripping over your words and trying to be extra nice. Now, this is really interesting because it's, it, when we think about guilt, we think about guilt arising from not doing something that we, that we have to do. But this is guilt that arises when you've done everything right. Okay, so what is that? Uh, why would somebody feel guilty whenever they've done nothing wrong, the police officer leaves and you drive off? Where is that guilt arising from? And for Lacan, guilt, that guilt arises from a, a small disconnect between demand and desire, right? So there's the demand of society that you pull over when the police uh, you know, put on their sirens, right? That's obvious. That's the, the kind of the authority figure of society says you do that. And of course you have to do it or you'll get in bigger trouble. But desire is you may desire to uh, run away, to just speed off, to have a chase, to defy the authority figure, to stand up against the, the authority of the police and the authority of society. So you have this desire and you have the demand. And so when you're pulled over, although you haven't done anything wrong, your superego is judging you because you've desired to do something wrong. Um, and that is more about what guilt is. Guilt is the, the, the disconnect when you give ground to your desire, right? Whenever you don't do, when you don't speed off and run away. Now, of course, you shouldn't speed off and run away because you'll end up in prison. Um, but we can begin to see what, what guilt is in a clearer way. Um, now, you like even in daily life when you go out and there's demands of your family or demands of a party you're at a party and there's certain demands about how you should act and how you shouldn't act people will often feel neurotic people when they go home they'll start going over what they did and didn't do at the party they'll feel like um they did something wrong they'll feel guilty you'll sit in the shower and think about, oh, I shouldn't have done that, I shouldn't have said that, right? But actually, you know, nine times out of 10, you've done everything right. You've gone to the party, you've obeyed the rules, you've acted in accordance to the way you should act, and yet you feel guilty all the same. And that is because potentially there is a desire in you to shout at some of the people in the party who you don't like, or fight against the structure. There's something in your desire that is you know unconscious to you not something that you're aware of necessarily but you're aware of indirectly through the guilt that you feel or another example might be you're in a conversation with somebody and then when you get home you start to talk you start to think about talk to yourself about all the things that you wish you'd said i wish i'd said this i wish i'd said that and you start to obsess over the things that you would like to have said right um all of these are examples where we've given ground relative to our desire. In other words, we have had a desire to rebel, to say something, to do something, and yet the demands of society uh, override that. And that difference creates this guilt. And funnily, Elliot had a very good example of the opposite, because just last week, uh, he was pulled over by the police. He was driving home and there was a four-way stop and uh, there was a, a postmates delivery at the house. Their house was just, you know, like literally one minute away from the, or 30 seconds away from the, the four-way stop. So they drove right through the four-way stop without uh, stopping. And uh, they got to the house to get to the postmates person. And there was a police officer pulled in. And Elliot was saying that he didn't feel guilty at all. He just was laughing. He's like, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I went through the, this four-way stop. And um, he said, I did it because I was, had a postmates person waiting. And um, interestingly, the police officer didn't give a ticket. I, wanna, I might come back to that in a second, but we do talk about that in the podcast, so maybe I won't talk about that. But he didn't feel guilt at all. And why did he not feel guilt? Well, because he didn't give ground to his desire. 
His desire was to get home. The demand of society was to stop at the stoplight. He broke the law, got caught, and yet didn't feel any guilt whatsoever because he'd done what he desired. So weirdly, that means that the way to get rid of your guilt is not to try to conform more to society. So that's a lot of a lot of therapies, a lot of counseling, a lot of practical advice is designed to help you adapt to society and society's norms, right? And there, there's a famous cognitive psychologist who's very into this. Again, it's about how do you adapt to the wider society? But Lacan's view gives us an opportunity to think about health that is not about adapting to society. Because as Bertrand Russell said, sometimes in some societies, the only decent people are in jail, right? The only, the only way to be decent is to be in jail. Um, and the reason why Lacan opens up the space to understand how you can be healthy and maladapted to society is because Lacan says that, that what's important is that you listen to your desire and you, you remain true to your desire structure. Now, what does that mean? Because it can't mean that you speed off whenever the police try and pull you over for purely pragmatic reasons, right? Um, but there's a way to square this circle. Um, first of all, the idea is that as you are able to express your desire and how, and how your desire functions, you will feel less guilty. So instead of the opposite way of going, the more that I try to obey the law, the less guilty I'll feel. No, this is the, Lacan has the same insight, you know, is basically playing off the, the idea of Paul, whereas the more you obey the law, the more guilty you feel. Because of course, the more you obey the law, the more your unconscious desire erupts, and that comes out in unhealthy ways. If you're able to embrace your desire and enact your desire in some way, then the guilt will begin to diminish. And not go away completely, especially for, some, for neurotic individuals, uh, a bit of guilt is a part of life, and it's a good thing, it's not a bad thing, but you just don't want enough guilt that it destroys you, right? Um, so one of the things we talked about in the podcast is, I talked briefly about three different types of desire, three desire structures. Um, uh, yeah, I'll briefly mention them now. The first is the desire structure of uh, somebody who, uh, this is the majority of people, you need an obstacle to get to what you want, right? So if you take the most simple example of sex, right? Uh, two people, the way that they have sex is through obstacle. So they have a date night, they have a weekend away, they have a meal that they go on, they have dates, right? So all of these are kind of obstacles that get in the way. And of course, somebody might go, why are you going on a date night and arranging a babysitter and doing all of that. If you just, if you guys just want to have sex, why don't you just directly do it? But of course, the idea is that for most people, no, it's the obstacles that actually generate the desire, right? So that's the way in which the desire functions. And you do need to have date nights. You do need to have uh, romantic times away, presence, all of this kind of stuff. Or if it's just a purely a sexual act that somebody wants, and they're going to uh, a sex worker. Uh, basically, there's lots of transgressions. They have to pay somebody, so it costs money. It's uh, transgressive. People might judge them. Their children might judge them, or their partner might judge them. So there's all of these things you have to overcome in order to do it, um, which allows you to then enjoy the sex. Then there are others uh, who directly identify with the obstacle. So this is a more perverse kind of structure of desire where you directly desire what gets in the way of, of sex, right? So you think about sex workers who are dominatrixes or something like that, where sex isn't the, the aim, it's not the objective, it's actually the impossibility of having sex that's the desire. So you directly desire the obstacle to what you want. And then there's more psychotic kind of structure where uh, you can have sex without any obstacles. Obstacles are completely indifferent to you. You can just directly embrace it. Um, and that's a type of fantasy of the neurotic, right? But it, it, it exists for very few people and it's got its own problems as well. But all of those are just three types of desire. 
And when you know how you desire, you can remain true to it. It can express itself in multiple ways, in different ways, but you can kind of stay true and not compromise your desire structure, uh, but find kind of healthy ways for it to, to express itself. And so concretely, um, you know, there's the demands of society and there's maybe your desire to rebel against those for good reasons. Uh, the question is then how do you do that in a way that doesn't obviously lead to you going to prison or something like that. And so you have to kind of try to navigate those kinds of issues. But it's not about compromising your desire. Because if you compromise your desire, your guilt will just grow and grow and grow until it becomes condemnation. And then the condemnation will erupt in very negative behavior. And of course, then there's this uh, theological dimension to this, of course, which is the more the guilt, the more the, the more the law, the more the guilt, the more the guilt, the more the death, right? And then of course, love, salvation is that somehow you get rid of the law and guilt, and yet in the embrace of what you want, you're also healthier, right? You don't do negative stuff. So that's, that's kind of beginning to unpack what Lacan means by this phrase, uh, guilt arises when you seed or give ground relative to your desire. Um, and of course, the desire is not necessarily your desire. And the demand is not necessarily the demand of society. They're kind of intertwined. Like, for example, that police officer potentially desires that you speed off and then they, they, they can have a fancy car chase, right? So there's a, there's a desire and a demand you know, so there, there is this weird kind of a uh, like, uh, good example, I suppose, is when your parents tell you to not go out and get drunk. Don't go out and party and get drunk and hang out with crazy people. I want you to study hard and get into university. So that's the demand. But then if you do that, you kind of might perceive that your parents are a little disappointed, like they want you to be a little rebellious and go out there and do your own thing. And so you're kind of this feel this guilt because the desire and the demand and the other is not at one right so this idea of demand and desire kind of it's not just the demand is outside us and the desire is within us uh, both of them are in us and outside of us uh, so is there anything else i would like to say and then i'll look at some comments no pretty much that's it it's like so maybe a practical what 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 is this useful for right what what why, what can we do with this theory um i suppose very concretely we can ask ourselves when we feel guilty what is it that we desire that we're not uh letting ourselves know so when you feel guilty you can ask yourself the question of what is the transgression within me that i'm not aware of what is it that i want to express that i'm kind of repressing um so guilt is a good sign, uh, just like anxiety is a good sign of, uh, uh, well, guilt is a good sign of some unconscious desire, some repressed desire that you're not finding space for in your life. But I suppose that's a, that's a useful thing to ask yourself. So in a nutshell, basically all I've said here is that from the kind of Lacanian perspective, one way of thinking about this phrase is that there are demands that we give ourselves, that society gives us, and that we try to obey. Uh, and then there are desires. And even if we obey all of the laws and all of the demands of society, in fact, the more you obey the laws of society, the more you give yourself over to the, the superego injunctions, the more guilt you feel. And so you even see this within very moral groups. Uh, on, on the internet or whatever, people who are kind of seeing themselves as liberal bastions of ethics. But the more they in their community give themselves over to what they think is right, the more it seems like they can't obey it, the more they condemn other people for not being pure enough, or they condemn themselves for not being pure enough, right? So the more you give yourself over to the demand, the more guilt arises, and the guilt, which turns eventually into condemnation, becomes very destructive.